The UK's pet population currently stands at a staggering 54 million. But for some, owning a cat or a dog just isn't enough. <laughs> Around the world, dangerous animals... Watch your horns. Whoops. ..live as human companions. Look, dinner. Oh, let go, good girl. That's all for now. They're not as cuddly as a cat, but there's just something about them. <laughs> it's like a human, but in an animal's body. For the past 10 months, I've been meeting a rare breed of animal owner. In you go. Come on. Good girl. I'm trying to find out what sort of person lives with such a deadly animal. Oh we brag about him because he's like our child. And why they choose a pet that could so easily kill them. If you don't respect them, you're going to get hurt. Got really good manners. What can I get you? With thousands of people across the planet owning dangerous animals, the rise of social media has meant a unique global community has formed. You're such a good boy. And brought the owners out into the public eye. Hey, you know better than that. What are you doing? I'm travelling far and wide to find out who these families are and why they do it. On Instagram, I'd come across former Russian circus artist Yuri and Svetlana Pantolinko and their bear, Stepan. <laughs> He's so famous that for up to a thousand euros a day, you can hire Stepan for photo shoots, music videos and even weddings. It's taken me six months to be fitted into the bear's busy schedule. And at last, I arrive in Moscow to meet my interpreter, Andre, who is taking me to meet the bear and his owners. He'd met Stepan before and advised me to bring the bear's favourite treat, a cake. Whenever I visit Stepan the bear, each time we bring the cake for him because he really likes sweets. Like his wild brothers likes the wild honey. Are you excited to go back and see the bear? Relating with uh, such animal is, I don't know, it's, it's really exciting. It's like a human, but in an animal's body. Is this bear as human as Andrei tells me? And if he's working so much, I wonder, can he really be a pet? How dangerous is Stefan? Ну никогда не надо забывать, что он хищник, конечно. Там подыхание. Животное, которое с таким весом, с такой силой, в принципе, он он реально действительно может быть опасным для человека. I can't help thinking Stepan must be a good earner for them to risk sharing their lives with such a dangerous animal. Do you ever give him any sedatives to keep him calm? Медикаментов никаких мы не употребляем. Самое главное хорошо его кормить, то есть он съедает 25 килограмм овощей, фруктов, рыбу, кашу и хорошее настроение именно прогулки. Пойдем, позавтракаем все вместе. Мы пойдем с тобой гулять. Мы идем, 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 идем. Пошли скорее. Призвей. Правая, левая, правая, левая. Кто Малая. будет за стол садиться у нас? Вот так. Пошли, Ой. Степ, пойдем. Давай. Давай ручки сюда, Степ. Вот так. Молодец. Вот такой, молодец. Садимся. Какая ты умница, да? Ну что, Степ, приятного аппетита. Да. Молодец. 
Держать. А, хорошо. Чем-то. Вот так. Мы обычно завтракаем, а он может подойти к нам, и мы его чем-то угощаем обязательно. Спасибо. Аккуратно держите. Ой, Степа! What are his table manners like? <laughs> Честно говоря, да, по медвежью. <laughs> То есть такой нерасторопный, все роняет, все, скажи, ломаем, ну, но... можно, ему можно. Вот, вот. 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 Молодец, молодец, все, молодец. Да. Да. Так, открываем. Mm. Кушай. Сейчас тортик. Не знаю, это твоя слабость. Ой, вот тебе, а это мне. Так. Does he like the cake that we brought? Очень Конечно, вкусный. сладенький, скажем, Очень вкусненький. вкусный, свеженький. Да. да. Это же, ну, И вот свежий. так, вот так, маленький мой. Степан, do you like this cake? Степан. Одно из главных условий их обитания это еда. Молодец. And if you didn't feed him, would he attack you? Да нет, атаковать вряд ли, но это лишний повод сделать именно то, что мы ему доверяем, и он нам доверяет. Когда что-то не нравится, он нам показывает сигнал, что он чем-то недоволен. Да, да. В данном случае он нам объясняет, что он хочет еще побольше торта. Ну, Стёпа, еще давай скажи. конечно. Он видит, что тут тортик-то не дает. Да-да-да-да. Yuri and Svetlana have spent over 20 years caring for Stepan. This is beginning to feel more like a family, especially as they don't have children of their own. Содержать его всю жизнь, потому что это уже как член семьи нашей. Дитё наше. И всегда маленький. Для нас он всегда остается маленьким. Конечно. Brown bears are lethal. But having just had breakfast with one, I'm starting to see how such an animal could become a family member. Ой, да, конечно, ты любишь так вкусно кушать, да? To continue my investigation into why people share their homes with dangerous pets, I'm heading down under, where I'll meet Vicky Lowing, a retired single nurse, who lives in the suburbs of Melbourne with three crocodiles. Her biggest pet is Jilly, a saltwater crocodile. She could grow as long as a limousine and is equipped with 24 razor-sharp teeth. Divorced for 13 years, Vicky lives alone after her grown-up son moved nearer the city. Hello. Just your mum. The girls stay there, don't jump. This is Julfia. She's 11 years old. She's a saltwater crocodile and she's a sweetheart. This is her territory, though. This is where I have to be careful. The love bite from her could really do some damage. And there's no hesitation about respecting her space. What would she do to you if she attacked? She could drag me into that tank and drown me in no time. Do the death roll. So it would be so sort of goodbye, Vicky. But she, she's a sweetie. Good girl, you're hungry? I'm really confused. How can a killing machine be treated so affectionately? Look, dinner. You ready? It's been a couple of times I've had to let the tongs go because she had too much of a grab on them. And that jaws, you know, comes down at you like... Yeah, you wouldn't want your hand to get in the way, that's for sure. That's why I use the tongs. Only a bit, come on. Oh, let go, good girl. That's all for now. Is a crocodile just like any other pet? To me, yeah. Just like any cat or dog. I've always treated them like I treated any pet. A lot of people think that's weird, but to me that's normal. And when she looks at you, what does she see? I think she sees me, this might sound crazy, but, but like a mum figure. But I treat all of my pets like they're a human, I suppose. They're like my kids. Like Stepan the Bear's owners, Vicky thinks of herself as a parent to her pet. But she takes it a step further as her crocodile has its own bedroom. Once a week, 
Vicky allows Jilly to come inside for a sleepover. The spare room, she takes that up. <laughs> Sometimes she comes over just to have company and spend time with me. Before she comes in, Vicky makes sure 20-year-old Johnny and 10-year-old Fovian are safely tucked away. No, don't, don't do that, don't do that. Don't do that. Stop struggling. Here we go, it's all right, it's okay. Does that not hurt? Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> Come on, Jilly. Time to come inside. Come on, baby. Good girl, Jilly. Come on. Come in, darling. Further, come on. Pick up further, come on. Good girl. Oh. Oh. Woo, Jilly. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, Jilly. We can't get past her. Good girl, Jilly. Good girl. Let me get past you. Good girl. Good girl, Jilly. Good girl. She knows her room. She knows her place. And in she goes. Does she keep her room tidy? Oh, no. There was one time she did a poo and a wee, and it stunk like anything. Took six goes with the shampoo to get the smell and the stain out. In you go. All the way in. Come on. Good girl. So I can get the heater in. Good girl. Good girl. Now grab another heater. To survive, crocodiles must be kept above 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, I do that all the time. Good girl. I'm Good sweltering, girl. but I can see Vicky is going to extraordinary lengths to make her pet feel at home. Nice and warm. Do you enjoy it when she comes to spend the night? Yeah, I do. I love it. I love it. It just goes to show that she feels comfortable here. Good girl, Jilly. I might move now. What, what do you need to be careful of? Um, well, she could swing around and grab my leg or any part of me. Good girl. So far, I'm learning these animals seem like family members. But is she taking this form of companionship too far? They've just got to learn that they've got to share the rest of the territory. With you? With me. Less likely to get eaten. Exactly, especially the, the big one. Good night, Jilly. I'm travelling the world, trying to understand why families choose to have pets that could kill them. Despite owning cats and dogs... Jilly, Mum. Hello, darling. Why would they befriend a lethal animal? Stop! Stop! Нежнее со Светой. Да. To keep these animals, many countries, including the UK, require people to have special licenses and facilities. Wow. One type of dangerous pet you don't need a license for is a farm animal. And I'd come across a couple in America who live with a one-ton buffalo. I'm off to Minnesota to meet Mike and Valerie Fogel oh. and their giant pet, Cody. Buffaloes are America's largest animal, and Cody is as heavy as a small family car. I'm told they are highly aggressive animals. And in America, you're five times more likely to be killed by a buffalo than a grizzly bear. For the past 40 years, Mike's family have farmed buffalo for meat. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. What's the lifespan of a buffalo? 24 to 36 months is the time you usually harvest them for meat. It's kind of a double-edged sword because as we're in the meat business and then Cody is a pet. At birth, Cody was separated from the herd. Instead of taking him to the slaughterhouse, Mike and Valerie have raised him as their pet. He recently celebrated his 13th birthday. It definitely wasn't his choice. His mother rejected him, 
And once they're an orphan, chances are it won't survive. In the summer months, Cody joins Mike and Valerie inside their home. But first, it's time to clean him up, and there's only one way to bath a buffalo. Ooh, they're busy. I hope we can get a bay. Get it washed behind your ears. Get the show on the road. Here we go, buddy boy. Get some shampoo for his back leg. Yep. How big are their horns? Oh, she's one brave lady getting back there. Yeah. <gasps> Got a hairpin trigger. Oh, 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 sorry. That scared him. Oh, Cody. Oh, Cody. All right. That come off pretty good. Mike and Valerie's five children and nine grandchildren live all over the US. Come in, bud. Is Cody being treated like a substitute family member? Whoops, turned. <sighs> Not a lot of room to spare. Yep. <laughs> OK. Good boy. He's just curious. He's. See what's new? No, oh, he wants to get up on the couch. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't take long for Cody to make himself at home. He loves the leather, and he'll be on there. <laughs> Lay down. Down. But why would anyone invite okay. a one-ton buffalo inside their actual home? <laughs> it's just real satisfying being able to sit with him like that. It's not like it gives you a buzz. It's just knowing that, yeah, he'll come in, he'll lay on the floor by me and listen to my dumb stories. I mean, if he wouldn't trust me right now, he'd be tearing things up and going through a wall. Would you be able to escape if he decided to attack? No. He'd be able to inflict a lot of damage in a short period of time. They're just so fast. We're not afraid. He's not afraid. It's um, like having one of the grandkids over, I guess. They're all older now. And yeah. He's their baby. And I guess you guys are his herd. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. yeah, we're the we... herd. Hope he knows that we love him. Right, Cody? Like baby. No. Move, move out of the way, Mike. Uh, <sighs> I see a trend between the owners I'm meeting. These animals are all being treated like family members. Okay, watch your horns. But are they doing it to fill a void? And is it even fair for a dangerous animal to be considered a household pet? I'm still trying to figure out what type of person is attracted to these creatures. You're not biting my nose. Although it's highly regulated, America has the world's highest concentration of exotic pets. Almost 20 million. During my research, I came across Larry Wallach from New York, known as the Tiger Man of Long Island. Just... Larry has spent 30 years rescuing and temporarily housing thousands of animals. So here's like some of my stuff. L let me just show you. These are the bears I gave to the zoo, Honey and Pooh. This is Muggsy on my yacht. We also had a gorilla named Chris. And what's the thrill? It's very powerful to be able to Go in a cage with a big animal, make it hug you and kiss you, you know. My mother thought I was out of my mind. In 2003, Larry even got a call from Michael Jackson about adopting a tiger called Spike. This is Neverland. I lived with Michael Jackson for a little while. Mike saw me on TV, and he sent the 747. It's just me, the tiger, to Neverland. The tiger stayed for about three months, and Mike said, your cat's depressed, he misses you. Come get him. The one when Spike saw me, he was just like, holy crap, dad. 
I've never seen an animal so excited to see a human not eat him. Larry was born into a wealthy family and has the luxury of not needing a day job, allowing him to indulge his passion. How much have you spent on animals over the years? A million bucks over the last 30 years. Easy million dollars. He's been married twice and lives with his 10-year-old daughter, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Hi. Today, Larry has a dangerous animal license and uses it to show exotic animals in schools and at public events. He's cool, right? Currently, he's housing a wallaby called Jack that he uses to exhibit. It's three times a day. Anything green is good. Good little hands. Already, I can see Larry's relationship with animals feels different. It's less personal and more of a thrill. Larry and Morgan are inviting over some other members of the exotic community to help me understand what attracts them to dangerous animals. Our friends are coming tonight at pizza, and we're going to also have some alligators and snakes. And because we're having alligators and snakes, Hershey and the cats must go in the bedroom, mm. or they will be dinner. No, I'd stop. No. Come here. Put them in your bedroom. No, 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 don't come out. But never underestimate what I have here. You know I'm licensed for polar bears, right? Bagel! Bagel? Are you there? Oh, there he is. Fat cat. Kitties, no. Although Larry has a dangerous animal license, it can make him unpopular. I have a problem with my neighbors and me having all these different exotic animals. And if they see me walking in with a six-foot alligator, the police will be here. Everyone will end up coming. So I'm waiting till it's dark. Then we can bring in the alligator. Doug's here. Watch the dog so it doesn't eat the dog. Hershey, come on. Come on in. Go look at Larry's friend Doug is a licensed reptile expert. Hey, Doug. I'm hoping they can both shed some light on why some Americans are so exhilarated by these creatures. That's an American alligator. His name is Sneakers. Will he bite your foot? That's why his name is Sneakers. I've had a bunch of gators. The more you feed them, the better they'll act for you. If the animal grabs a hold of you and tears, and twists and turns and rolls, it could do some serious damage. <laughs> They're so strong. <laughs> OK, let them go. This snake here could basically strangle her in about 10 seconds. <laughs> They're beautiful and all, but they can do a lot of damage real quick. He's a monster. Right. You can handle him, but he's a monster. Yeah. Snake's a snake, but he could choke you to death. You never know when an animal can turn. Yeah. Out of all the people I've met, this is the first time that danger has genuinely felt part of the attraction. And why do you think there is a fascination in America with exotics? Can't have it. Yeah, can't have it. most likely, yeah. I think because when people tell you you no. can't have something, you no. want it more. I mean, everybody wants the forbidden fruit or like something that's supposed to be different. You know, a lot of this stuff 30 years ago was not a big deal. It wasn't like taboo. Now there's so many people that are into it and now they're trying to shut us down. We're trained professionals. We have permits that nobody in the world can get anymore. We're really a select group of people. Even with having licenses and stuff, you know, it's not acceptable to have pets, you know, animals like these. This is our way of life. I just love it. Larry is not like the other owners and doesn't treat the animals as family. I suspect he's doing it more for the thrill and seems to be part of an American subculture. To explore this, I arranged to meet Larry again, but he stopped returning my calls and disappeared. 
until I see Jack the Wallaby on the news. Armed with a search warrant, authorities opened up the home of Larry Wallach. Inside, a wallaby was found starving in a cold garage. Thin, no muscle mass left on him, uh, locked in kind of like a dog cage in a garage, basically, to fend for himself. But the owner, Larry Wallach, who once gave a tiger to Michael Jackson, was nowhere to be found. This is an ongoing investigation, and there are conflicting reports to where he is. Around the globe, it's estimated there are up to 1.6 billion pets. Some owners make money from their animals. What do you do? And some even turn them into members of the family. Come on, Cody, we're going to the bar. I'm in Minnesota with Mike, Valerie and Cody, their one-ton pet buffalo. We're off to uh, Buck Knuckles. He's going to the bar. We've had Cody over there a couple times. Yeah, he spent quite a few hours down here. Had to pull him out. <laughs> a few times a year, Are you? Cody joins Mike and Valerie at their local watering hole. It's OK. Do we have a bartender here? <laughs> Cody is immediately the center of attention. Yeah, yeah. Just let him see, yeah? Loves everybody looking at him. He loves the cameras. But he's not the only one reveling in the limelight. Do you enjoy the attention that it, it brings? I guess I do. You know, that that's the high for me, um, being very proud. It's like having a talented kid please you. We brag about him because he's like our child. We're involved in everything he does. It is like having a child that's uh, in the uh, top of his class. Love him. Cheers, Cody. Yep. Mike and Valerie's ability to control Cody is remarkable. And at the ranch, I want to know how they've tamed such a powerful animal. He's looking to us to lead him, to tell him that it's OK. If you act like you're afraid, then he's going to pick up on that. So we, are, we always operate very confidently with him. And that's how we've maintained it. Good boy. What a good boy. Yeah. If you don't respect them, don't even think about it because you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how big a commitment is it to having Cody as a pet? We interact with him every day in one way or another. So it's, it's not like you can have a pet buffalo and then put him out to pasture. That won't work. It's like having a three-year-old that will live with you till they're 20 years old. Some people shouldn't have exotic pets by no means, and I can see the government coming in and regulating it, and I think some people do it for the money. But unless you got your heart in it, don't do it. I mean, he's become our way of life, like our child. Look at him. He's going to sleep. Oh, give, give me a home where, where the, the buffalo roam and the deer and the antelope play. Right, Cody? Seeing Mike and Valerie's relationship with Cody shows me that dangerous animals can fill an emotional need and become one of the family. But one person's motivation I'm still struggling with is Larry Wallach's who hit the news after his Wallaby Jack was taken by the authorities. I couldn't understand how Larry could abandon an animal, and now he faced allegations of animal cruelty. I'd been messaging Larry for five weeks, and then he got in touch. I'm calling to find out where he's been. So listen, here's what happened. I went to sleep on a Friday night and uh, I woke up on a Saturday night, three weeks later, in a coma with spinal meningitis, sepsis, and pneumonia. 
And, and did, did you ever imagine that when you woke up, you'd be the subject of a huge news story? No. I was already in coma nine days. Larry spent a month in hospital. And his illness meant all allegations of animal cruelty were dropped. Jack the Wallaby was rehomed to a sanctuary. I don't, need, I don't even know what happened. I went to sleep and I woke up in critical care. But I'm good. I just went back and got checked. Although Larry was cleared of any wrongdoing, I wonder how someone who's exhibited animals for three decades feels about the recent controversy. It's sad, because when I think of the people who talk about me negatively, it, it, it hurts my feelings. I know how hard I've worked at helping animals. People get connected to their animals. They were like children to me, so not having them is sad. I put in thousands of hours working with those animals, and they're gone. Funny animals always listen. Larry's reputation has been damaged, and although he's an exhibitor rather than a pet owner, I can see there's still a strong emotional bond. Mugga bugger. Miss you, mugger. Mugga boo. It seems controversy is never far away with these animals, and as I travel to see Vicky in Melbourne, I met with some distressing news. A 47-year-old man is believed to have been killed by a crocodile in the Northern Territory. He disappeared while wading with two women through a river crossing. Australia is a country notorious for crocodile attacks. A man has been taken by a crocodile while fishing with his wife in the Northern Territory. What are thought to be human remains have been found in the stomach of a crocodile killed after a seven-year-old girl disappeared in a waterhole. In the past four years, nine people have been killed by saltwater crocodiles. Good girl, Jilly. Just changing the water. The same species as Vicky's nine-foot pet, Jilly. No, get in there. No, don't bite it. Don't need a tank. Stop it. Go back. He's telling me to go away. No, good girl. And when you hear stories about other people losing hands mm. and limbs... That... And lives. Do you, does that worry you and, and make you think, I don't want to own a crocodile anymore? No, no. It's, it's like anything. It's like comparing um, a wild horse to a domestic horse. I mean, they're totally different. They've always got the wild instinct there, and you have to be careful and be aware that they might turn one day. <laughs> but hopefully she won't <laughs> become aggressive. He's a beautiful girl. He's a beautiful girl. Do you think it's possible for a crocodile to love a human? Oh, definitely. Without a doubt. Do you think Ginny loves you? Yeah, I do. Sorry about that. I find it strange Vicky is so aware of the danger, yet so determined to mother her crocodile. And she's even spending her pension on Jilly's new pool. How much has this cost you in total? Between four and five thousand. She's a lucky crocodile. A spoilt one, you might say. Do you feel slightly trapped by having these crocodiles? Oh, oh, definitely. Very committed. Can't go anywhere. But I don't regret it. So every day here is an adventure for me. Vicky's mother, Frances, has come for a rare visit. Oops, sorry. I'm always tripping Julia. And I'm keen to know what she thinks of her daughter's choice of pet. Well, it's very dangerous. They are very dangerous animals. The big one, Jilly, I just don't quite trust her. 
Look how big it is. That out. Hop in there and see what you think of that. I suppose I do wish she didn't have them, but she has, and that's that. And she really loves them. Oh, <laughs> I can't tell you. I'm so excited for her. Look at her. She loves it. What can I say? <laughs> She deserves it. She de deserves freedom if she could have it, but she wouldn't survive in the wild. But I still believe it's better that she have some freedom here than just be caged up in a zoo. Good girl. At 11, Jilly is on the cusp of sexual maturity, an age considered highly dangerous for a crocodile. Good girl. There could be a problem when she is due for mating, when instinct kicks in then. Because you just don't know when, the, you know, the natural 200 million years of instinct just might be triggered by this sort of habitat. And she could launch. Hello, it's your mum. Living alone, Vicky seems happy to dedicate everything to her crocodiles. Is it worth the sacrifice? Yeah, definitely. Because I love them. Who, who else is going to look after them like I do? You know, all with the love and the passion I've got for them. Not many people have that for, especially crocodiles. Hey, baby. Hey, darling. Who's mummy's girl, yeah? This is my space. This is my pond. I'm on the final part of my journey, finding out who lives with dangerous pets and why they do it. I'm heading to see Stepan the Bear with my interpreter, Andre, who has some exciting news for me. We are traveling back to Stepan, and now the surprise, we will meet a young cub. Uh, it is son of Stepan, it's his real son. Uh, he is three months old, uh, he was rescued from zoo. Over the years, Stepan's formidable reputation has seen the Moscow Zoo pay him to father bears. But this is the first time his offspring has joined the family. This is Simeon. Tell me, Simeon. We have three months. This is his son. Tell me, Stepan. This is the most beautiful thing we have grown. Tell me, right? What is the plan for the future with this bear? The plan is that the character will show the time. We hope that the character will be very strong. We will be very strong in it, as it is said, so that he will become famous. Oh, wait, 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 А возможно, что он просто вырастет большим и вернется в зоопарк, откуда мы его взяли. И если получится, я надеюсь, что он будет такой же известный, как и его отец Степан. This cub could be the next money spinner for the family. In order to protect their new investment, Stepan is kept away from his son. Вот, и он сразу же почувствовал по запаху, что появился маленький. Я думаю, что если бы э, Степан оказался рядом с малышом, то сыграли бы э, натуральные чувства любого медведя, и он мог бы действительно причинить ему вред или вплоть до того, чтобы убить. Feeling left out, Stepan is suffering from a bad case of jealousy. But Yuri has the cure. Давай у меня будем теперь кушать. По чуть-чуть будем, давай. Главное здесь в этой причине дать ему достаточно любви, достаточно ласки, чтобы он чувствовал, продолжал чувствовать, что он номер один, что он самый любимый. Подожди, Степа, подожди, ты вор, Степа, молодец. Сочек забрал у света. Да. Внимательно будем смотреть, Степа. Ловить скорее Мы будем. Ловить будем, давай, маленький мой. И раз первый поймали. Приготовились, Степа, внимательно. Опа! Поймал, молодец! Мой зайка, Это мой идет сладкий. игра, ничего. In the past year, Stepan has worked 80 days. 
Commanding fees of up to a thousand euros a day. Money clearly plays a role in keeping him as a pet. Жизнь с таким медведем именно совместная, она требует ежедневной отдачи. Что в один прекрасный момент можно было, когда позвонит, мы готовы отсняться. Круглый год мы должны быть рядом с ним. Молодец, молодец. In human years, Stepan is nearing his seventies, and until his cub grows up, he won't be allowed to retire. Сейчас он, конечно, у нас немножко болеет именно артрит. Конечно, старость приходит и очень быстро, кстати. Would he like to just be an old bear, just living out his days in peace and quiet? Но, как видели, все равно ему нравится и играть, ему нравится веселиться. Все ему хлопают, все ему радуются. Его то, что он показывает им трюки, ему это доставляет удовольствие. Will there ever be a day that he retires? Вы знаете, если я думаю, что уйдет на пенсию, он умрет, потому что ему нравится общение, ему нравится, когда люди возле него. То есть это обречет его на быструю смерть, я думаю. But is it about his well-being or how much he depends on him financially? Мы не можем уже оставить его, чтобы он остановил свой ритм, трудовой ритм, как скажем, вот такой вот. Но сказать, что мы зависим на сто процентов Степана, это нет, не так. Но то, что вот мы уже он заработал, то, что снимаясь в кино, он себя обеспечил полностью уже старость, пенсию обязательно. То есть это уже было. До последней секунды мы будем его кормить, лечить. Ухаживать за ним до последней секунды его жизни. Да. Stepan is unique, but I realize the only way you can truly tame such a dangerous animal is by committing thousands of hours of your life. Although he is a working bear, he seems to be very much loved. It's the last leg of my trip. I'm off to see Mike, Valerie, and their giant pet buffalo, Cody. A little bit of sugar. I've been invited to Sunday lunch with their close family and friends. It's going to be old-fashioned style. Pass the bowl. Let's see. So this is a family dinner party with a buffalo. Yep. Yep. If Cody wasn't included, everybody would go, where's Cody? So he'll be the king for the day. This is as good as it gets. Oh, the guest of honor's here. Cody's here. Yep. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Everybody watch their table, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Pass the beans. Mm -hmm. You've got really good manners. <laughs> you know what's going on, buddy? Do you know you're loved? It's kind of the thing that holds everybody together is, is Cody. We got a reason to celebrate and... Uh, yeah, there, there's no hiding it. He is part of the family. Before I came here, I never could have imagined that a six foot, one ton buffalo could be treated as a domestic pet. Good boy. But now I actually feel very safe in Cody's company. Everybody at one time say good boy. Good boy. I mean, I dare anybody to have an animal that would do like that. Dog, cat, horse. Mike and Valerie really have managed to turn this extraordinary animal into a pet. I've been asked the question, why do you do it? I struggled with that question. I got the answer. It's, it's not about the adrenaline. It's not about the attention. 
It's more of a spiritual thing. It's in my heart. And for that reason, I'm glad. Ten months ago, I set out to discover who belonged to this rare community and why they seek this type of companionship. You just love it, yeah? Despite the obvious danger, it's clear a wild animal can become part of the family. Oh, you want to come out? Good girl. Even though some make money from their pets, I can't deny that these owners have formed an extraordinary bond with the most unlikely of companions. I have emotional connections to these animals, unlike what people think, and that's okay. Such is life. I was real concerned about doing this because we'd look foolish. But, you know, I guess uh, if I look foolish, It's worth it. It's worth it. You take on a crocodile and you've got it forever. I love them. What more can I say? <laughs>